In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Are you faithful? Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, on which we contemplate, of course, the arrival of the Magi from the East, the Far East, at the manger to adore our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, for several weeks, they followed with a tiring or losing heart a miraculous star, which appeared and disappeared. And finally, despite the difficulties and trials of the journey, they reached their destination. And this is what we celebrate today, their adoration of our Lord of the Child Jesus in the manger of Bethlehem. And you know, I would like to meditate, to contemplate with you, especially this miraculous star. Because according to St. Ambrose, in the allegorical sense, this star that guided the Magi to Bethlehem represents another reality. And this other reality is our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Ambrose tells us that the star, the true star, the star of our lives is Jesus. And other fathers of the church, other fathers of the church, as well as St. Thomas Aquinas, highlighted several particularities of this star, which all reveal to us something of the incredible mystery of our Lord. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's consider this miraculous star. And first, the fathers note that it was a new star created especially by God for this occasion. In the same way, they say that Jesus is a new star, a star of unprecedented novelty. Because it supposes the assumption of a human nature by the word of God, and there has never been, nor will there ever be, a similar prodigy. Jesus is the new star. Now, as for the nature of this star, the father of the church tells us that it was formed by the angels from the elements that are in the air and not created like the other stars. In the same way, after the announcement of the, the angel Gabriel, Jesus was mysteriously formed in the virginal womb of the Blessed Virgin, like no man before him. Regarding the place where the star was, we see that it was placed in the air and no further that is between the sky and the earth. Why? Because in the same way Jesus is placed between heaven and earth, between God and man. He's a bridge, the mediator between man and the Holy Trinity. And you know, there is absolutely no casualty. No, not, no, it's not by chance, not by chance that we have all these particularities of the star. The movement, this star moved in a straight line from north to south and did not follow a circular movement like the other stars. Thus, we are shown that Jesus comes down from heaven, from above, to illuminate our path. Also, this straight movement invites us to seek God directly. Without turning around, that is, we must avoid the detours caused by sin. As for duration, this star lasted no longer than a short time. And we know only the time of the journey of the Magi. It fulfilled its mission and then disappeared. In the same way, the stay of our Lord on earth was of a short time, 33 years he wanted to assume our mortal condition and left 
after having fulfilled his redemptive mission. The size of the star. This star seemed also bigger than all the other stars. Likewise, the preaching of our Lord Jesus Christ surpassed that of all the other saints and prophets. And you remember these words of the gods of the temple. No man ever spoke like this man. Now the radiance of the star. The radiance of the star surpassed that of all the other stars. Thus, as God, Jesus infinitely surpasses all creatures. And as man, he is the companion of all creatures. This star also had a continuous splendor. It was seen by day and by night. Thus, in our Lord shines always the light of divinity. We also see that in, in the Gospel, that although it shone day and night, at times it disappeared and reappeared. And you remember the episode when they were arriving to Jerusalem, the, the star just disappeared, so they had to find, find their way using the, the councils of the scribes and Pharisees in Jerusalem. What does that show? This shows that although in Jesus the light of divinity always shone, at times he hid it, especially during the Passion, where it was eclipsed. It reappeared again after his resurrection. The mission of this star, it's unique guiding the Magi to their destination. Without it, without the star, their journey would have been impossible. And this is the same. The mission of Jesus is to guide us through this life. He is the only guide, the way, the truth, and the life. And he alone has the words of eternal life. And finally, the destination, the destination to which the star led was Jesus himself lying on the straw <clears throat> in the grotto of Bethlehem. In the same way, and this is absolutely wonderful, mighty faithful, Jesus guides us to himself, to eternity, to the vision of his divinity in the presence of Mary, Saint Joseph, the angels and all the saints. So, you know, I made a very brief summary of all the particularities the Father of the Church and St. Thomas Aquinas are describing in the commentary. And our conclusion, the conclusion of our meditation, I guess, you know, it's, it's amazing you know, to contemplate all the aspects, a lot of the aspects of the mystery of the incarnation of our Lord in this star. But now, you know, let's draw some practical conclusion. We understood that the star is Jesus. We understood that the star was absolutely necessary for the Magi to reach their destination. And you know, in their time, many, many people saw the star. A lot of people said, oh, this is something special. There is a special star in the year, in the sky. But only three, three wise men answered the call, saw the star, recognized the star, followed the star, leaving everything, and finally reached their destination. My dear faithful, <clears throat> this is the same with our Lord Jesus Christ. He is a star. Many, many people can see the star. Who in this world today doesn't know something about Jesus? The star is quite clear, quite visible. But who is really following the star? Who is recognizing the star? That this is the star that will really drive me, help me to reach my destination. That is heaven. 
A few ones, my dear faithful. A few ones. At least, my dear faithful, we need to see, recognize, and follow the star and leave everything to reach our destination. You remember the star was, you know, heading, guiding the magic straight, straight to Bethlehem. And this is the same thing we need to do. Going straight to the Bethlehem of heaven without all the turning around of the scenes. So, you know, the practical conclusion today, while we are meditating, contemplating the nativity scene, with the magic there, while we are contemplating our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, just look, see, if there is no turnaround in your life. Seeing the star, I'm sure we all do. Following the star, I'm pretty sure we all do, but... In which way? Straight or turning around? And this is the main question. So let's go straight to our Lord, my faithful. And this has to be, I would say, the resolution for our whole year. My dear Lord, I want to go straight to you. No turn around anymore. If I turn around in the past, not anymore. Let's go to the Lord. Let's go to the Lord with faith, hope and charity. And this is the grace I really wish you for this whole year. Let's go straight to the Lord. Let's get closer to the Lord. So that at the end of our journey here below, we will reach the Bethlehem of heaven with St. Joseph, Our Lady, the angels, and all the saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.